Hello, Johnny from Dicebreaker here, and this is How To Pen and Paper, a semi-regular series where we demystify pen and paper role-playing games and get you started on adventures of your own. Last time we were looking at the basics of what a pen and paper role-playing game is, but today I want to talk to you about picking one that's right for you. So hopefully if you're watching this video you're interested in either running or playing in a pen and paper role-playing game. You might have even lined up some friends to join you, although if you've not assembled a group of players yet, don't worry. Now, I won't lie to you, picking a pen and paper role-playing game can be a bit of a messy affair. One of the brilliant things about this hobby is you've got absolutely loads of different games to choose from, but of course, that makes picking just one a bit of a chore. There are lots of factors to consider when making your choice too. There's complexity. Is this game easy to pick up? Is it deep enough to keep you interested? Is it convoluted enough to put some people off entirely? Then there's the substance. Does this game allow for the sort of adventures you want to have straight away? Or are you going to have to tweak the rules and the setting to get what you want from it? Is it a self-contained game taking place in a single location, or is it a big sweeping epic that will take you to strange new worlds? What about the tone? Is it deadly serious? Is it scary? Is it intentionally farcical? Or is it somewhere in between? Are there pre-written adventures for you to follow, or will you need to write your own? Are there lots of different books you need in order to play this game, or is it just one volume? How expensive is that volume, or all those other volumes? And why do I suddenly feel a bit sick? In other words, it's easy to get a bit lost or make a decision you later end up regretting because the game doesn't match up with your expectations. So, what's the best way to get started in trying to find the right game? In my opinion, it all starts with a very simple question. Am I excited to play this? Simply put, if you can find a game you and your fellow players are excited about, you're already most of the way there. And what exactly you find exciting could be pretty much anything. Maybe it's the setting, a particular gameplay mechanic, a novel approach to character creation. Whatever it is, if it speaks to you, look into it. Even if some aspects of your chosen game are a little different to what you initially had in mind, as long as you and your fellow players are enthusiastic, you'll be able to forgive a lot of the things that maybe aren't ideal. For example, one of my favourite role-playing games of all time is Deadlands Reloaded. I talked about it in a recent video, 10 Great RPGs That Aren't Dungeons and Dragons. I think I'll always love this RPG because it's the first one I played, but here's the thing. Combat in Deadlands Reloaded can be wildly inconsistent because it runs off the Savage Worlds rule system. In order to hurt another character in this system, your damage roll has to exceed the target's toughness stat by at least 4 points. If it exceeds it by 8 points, it does more damage, 12 points, even more damage, and so on and so forth. Because of this tiered system, you might attack somebody and do zero damage in one combat round, and then try again with an identical attack and absolutely atomize your opponent. It's really weird, it makes fights feel a bit arbitrary from time to time, and in some instances it's downright frustrating. Despite that drawback, however, I love this game, because the theme is really great, the rules are easy to pick up, even if they're occasionally inconsistent, and they allow you to make really interesting, flawed characters. So you see, enthusiasm is useful. Or to put it another way, if you're thinking of playing a pen and paper role-playing game and nothing in particular about that game stands out as being particularly exciting, you're going to have a much harder time getting and staying invested. If you're stumped as to which games to look at, why not start narrowing things down to a broad theme? Are you after a fantasy setting, something in the Wild West, some far-flung sci-fi, or something a bit more down-to-earth? Try and get a sense of the general ballpark first, and then you can zero in on other games in the genre and start weighing up whether or not they're right for you, according to the criteria we mentioned earlier. As an example, let's say you and your players want to play a fantasy game. A good choice. Most new players gravitate towards Dungeons & Dragons because it's the one they've heard of, and it's immediately familiar. After all, you know where you are with an orc and an elf 
and a goblin. And that's a strong choice. D&D is a great game with absolutely loads of supporting material and a vast, heavily engaged community. But the thing is, there are still so many fantasy games on offer. You've got D&D, obviously, but then there's Labyrinth Lord, Pathfinder, the One Ring role-playing game, A Song of Ice and Fire, Band of Blades, Simba Room. The list goes on and on and on. So how do you pick between these? Well, again, it's all about where your priorities lie in your decision-making process. Pathfinder's second edition has just launched and it's getting some pretty rave reviews, for example, so maybe you'll want to see what all the fuss is about there. Labyrinth Lord plays like D&D used to and maybe that old-school vibe really appeals. I mean, you only need to look at the pages inside to be transported back to the late 70s. A Song of Ice and Fire has that fantastic house building mechanic I've spoken about before, allowing you to add an entirely new faction to Westeros and vie for power in the reign of Robert Baratheon. But then maybe the admin of raising armies and making sure you've got to feed them sounds like a bit of a chore. Band of Blades, which I reviewed recently, is also a bit admin heavy, but it runs off a brilliantly streamlined rule system in a really gritty setting. Pugmire is like D&D, only everybody is playing as a dog. Then there's the fantasy adventure game engine, or Phage from Green Ronin, aimed at fast-paced, dramatic, story-first roleplay. Dungeon World is all about smashing enemies in the face and gathering treasure, if you're into an old-school dungeon crawl. Or there's Lamentations of the Flame Princess, which is really, really dark. And the list just goes on and on and on. Hopefully that's given you an idea of some of the variety that's on offer. And all the same, that's a lot of information to have at one's fingertips. The truth is, if you want to gather the same information yourself and make a truly informed decision about what RPG is right for you, I'm afraid you're going to have to do a bit of homework. Part of the process will, of course, just be browsing around to see what games are out there and if there are any particular hooks that appeal to you. But you'd also do well to read around the internet about what other people are saying. Role players are a talkative bunch, believe you me, and there's no shortage of forum threads, blogs, Twitter posts, bathroom graffiti, you name it about the state of RPGs and which ones are really worth playing. There's far more opinion out there than you could possibly want or need, so take a pinch of salt and go have a look. It might be that somebody reveals a mechanic in a game or recounts a particular story that makes you see it in an entirely new light. Or maybe you'll spend ages reading about all these different RPGs only to come out convinced that the first game you looked at was, indeed, the right choice after all. It can be a bit of drudgery, but the more you know, the more certain you can be in your final decision and the better time you'll have around the table. That or you'll end up with a bunch of books you keep meaning to play, but haven't quite got round to trying yet. <clears throat> But again, picking the right RPG is mostly about knowing what you want out of the experience and finding something that excites you. If there's a complex game with a setting you really, really like the look of, and another game that's easier to pick up but a bit less narratively interesting, honestly, you'd be better off picking the more complex game and having a good chew on the rulebook for a bit. Being really jazzed about a game will carry you a long, long way. Okay, so what did we learn? Number one, think about what you want from your game. Think about the setting, the tone, how much fighting you want to do, whether you want magic, whether you want a big campaign or a short one, a pre-written one or one of your own making. In other words, picture your perfect RPG. And then number two, go out and look for it. Sites like Drive-Thru RPG are a fantastic resource for window shopping. So see what jumps out at you and think about exactly why it grabs you. Number three, see what people are saying about it. There will always be people nitpicking up one rule or another, so don't let them put you off entirely, but try to get a feel for the community around the game and see how much fun the players are having. Hopefully it will inspire you further. And then number four, arguably the most important one, is to get other people excited too. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones and you've been following these steps with a group of people you're already committed to playing with, working together to find a game you're all really excited to try out. If so, great. If not, never mind, you're just going to have to recruit a few people. 
Start talking to the folks you'd like to play with and pitch them the game. Tell them about the setting, about what makes you excited, about the types of characters they might be able to make. Answer their questions and be honest about any concerns they have, but generally, try to get them on side. Enthusiasm is infectious and your excitement is probably going to do more to get them interested than anything else. And with any luck you'll soon have a group absolutely raring to go. If you don't know any people nearby who are interested in tabletop role-playing games however, try not to worry. There are plenty of ways to try and find groups and to be honest they're all a pretty good way of making entirely new friends. Go to your local game store and ask if they run any role-playing nights. See if the game you're interested in has a Discord or whether some fans have made one for themselves. Visit those Discords. Say you're looking to find a group to play with, either online or in person, in a safe environment. Obviously take care of yourself on the internet. Roll20 is also a fantastic resource where people are almost always looking for others to share the hobby with. And if there are any gaming conventions in your area, see if they have RPG sign-ups. It can be really daunting, don't get me wrong, I played the Witcher RPG for four hours at PAX Unplugged in 2018 and apart from the GM, everybody around the table was a complete stranger. I was really nervous at first, to be honest, but I walked away having met some people I genuinely consider to be friends. So scary as it seems, it might just be the best decision you ever made. And I honestly believe that because pen and paper role playing games genuinely changed my life. Anyway, let's wrap this up before I get entirely too mushy on you. That was a quick look at how to choose a pen and paper role-playing game. Next time we're going to be looking at how to establish tone in a game, both as a player and as a GM, so do keep your eyes on the channel for that video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you have any tips for really good games people might like to try and maybe they've overlooked, or any other advice for how to pick a game that's right for you, please add your thoughts in the comments below. If you're still hungry for more, there are loads more videos from Dicebreaker for you to watch, a couple of them should be on the bottom of the screen right now, so do give one of those a click. Do like, subscribe and ring the bell icon so you don't miss anything else from Dicebreaker, but most importantly thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day. Mm -hmm.